I photographed Friday, Saturday, Sunday of the G20 protest weekend. And uh, I was, I was shocked at what I saw, really. I mean, I've never been, I've never been a person to really, really trust the police fully. Um, and I was shocked. I was, I was um, heartbroken, really, at what I saw. Um, I had no idea that the government of Canada would allow such a, a brutal and heavy-handed suppression of, of free speech and of journalism at the same time. Um, this city was a war zone, and it wasn't a war between rioters and the law. It was, it was a war between the police and the public. The, the people are rallying against <coughs> the barricades and the police and they're angry and they're yelling and they're shouting and they have their signs and the police are rallying against them and they're using pepper spray and tear gas and tasers and batons and it's like if somebody's mad at you and, they, and they're yelling at you but not doing anything else and then you punch them in the nose or shove them or something, it's going to escalate the situation. Um, violence tends to lead to more violence. And so these, these protests quickly descend into street fights. I know that like some of the other summits have gotten much more violent than the one that happened in Toronto. Um, and yet the, the police response that I saw here was unlike anything I've ever seen or heard of in Canada before. Everywhere I go, on every corner, there was a person being, being shook down by the police. And it, it felt like some kind of an authoritarian state. It, it felt like, uh, like we were living in Nazi Germany or something where you had to show your papers at every corner. Um, and yeah, just somebody would get stopped because they had a backpack or because they had dark clothing or because they dyed their hair or whatever. And this person would be treated like a criminal. I had it happen to me several times because I was carrying a backpack full of camera gear and, and a bicycle helmet to protect myself from getting my head smashed in by police batons. And then the police would say, well, why are you wearing a bicycle helmet? You must be here to incite violence. You must be here to riot. And I say, well, no, I'm here to protect myself from you. Some of my colleagues who were staff photographers, they were, they were beaten, they were tasered, they were arrested, they were strip searched, they were, I don't know, they went through a lot of shit. They really did. Just because they were doing their jobs, you know. Th these are the people who got a little bit closer than I did. And they, they paid a much more severe price for it because the the police didn't didn't want you to photograph them beating protesters heads in they didn't want you to to get pictures of the the brutality that they were using against peaceful people peaceful citizens of this city who pay taxes who go to work every day they didn't want you to see that and that's why they responded to photographers the way they did. Like they were storming us, military style. They'd have a line of riot police and we'd be up front as the photojournalists taking pictures of them. And a lot of us would have visible press credentials and we would be talking to each other as colleagues and being professional. And then they would just storm at us with their batons over their heads and their pepper spray out and scream and if they caught one of us, you know, we'd get tasered and stomped and hauled away in handcuffs. It happened. It happened a number of times. I had to, like, dodge rubber bullets at one point. They were firing rubber bullets at people. The, there was a, a young woman right beside me who got shot. She had a bruise the size of a dinner plate. She wasn't doing anything illegal. She was standing there, talking, holding a sign and she got shot. This is what I was there to photograph. The police said that they never used rubber bullets, but I actually had a photograph of the bullet leaving the gun. It was kind of a lucky shot, because it's sort of a 
one in a million sliver of time, but I got the photo of the bullet leaving the gun, <laughs> and it ran in the newspaper, and then the next day, next day they had to say, oh, well, yeah, we did use rubber bullets. But yeah, le anyways, legally, like, I could, I could run around and photograph those people committing illegal acts, and I did in some cases. Um, and, you know, I have one photograph in particular of a man who climbed up onto the remains of a burned police car, um, he didn't set the police car on fire, as far as I could tell. He showed up a while after it had been extinguished, but there was this burned out shell of a police car. He climbed up on top of it, and I made a picture of him standing on top of this thing. And then I found out later that he was, he was arrested and charged. I don't know if he was convicted or not, but he was arrested and charged. With what? I'm not exactly sure. Um, but it really bothered me that, that my photograph that I made as a document for the public to understand what had happened, a document for really for educational purposes and to foster dialogue among people, was taken and used for a completely different purpose. I did have, uh, I did have a, a moment in the G20 weekend where I photographed an officer who was guarding a building from a distance. I was about a half a block away from this individual and I made a picture of the building with the officer standing in front of the door. And he came up to me and he said, give me a camera. And I said, no, I didn't break the law. I don't have to give you my camera. I'm standing on a public street. I know my rights. And he said, well, if you don't give me your camera, I'm gonna arrest you. And I said, for what? And I said, he said, you're going to be arrested if you don't give me your camera right now. After everything that I had seen going on that weekend, I mean, this was on Sunday night. This was kind of the end of the G20 summits. I had already been thrown around and had gear destroyed. And I figured, well, even though it's my legal right to not give this person my camera, I'm afraid because... I don't really think that he's going to follow the rules. I think he is going to arrest me. And I don't really want to get arrested right now. So I gave him my camera. And then he deleted my pictures. And then he gave it back to me. And I was furious. But I had no leg to stand on because one of us was following the rules and one of us wasn't.